Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, I hope everything is well with you. And, uh, you know, and our weather looks like it's pretty well getting to the point that, hey, we might be able to enjoy a little bit of sun, a little bit more sun. But anyway, but today, hey, I think we've got quite a show. And as you know, here we in Oregon, we need to know what's going on. You know, politically, you hear all this stuff back in D.C. and this, that, and the other. These guys are basically talking to themselves, men, <laughs> women, both, if you will. But in all due respect, when it gets down to, quote, what are we doing here in Oregon? Pizza, people are more interested in meat and potatoes. You know, what about their jobs? You know what I mean? What about their families? Uh, what about what's going on around them? Crime, education, the whole nine yards. And I, and I think uh, one entity uh, that actually pays, that's going to be playing quite a major role here within the state of Oregon and basically the various associations, both from the D side and the R side, Republicans and Democrats. And we're fortunate to have today with us uh, the newly elected chair of the Republican Party, Suzanne Gallagher, and who happened, by the way, she just happened to have been the second woman that was elected to this position. And we're going to know a little bit more about her, get a feel of who Suzanne is. She's been very active. I've known her for years, too. Um, and, uh, and I know she's very active. She's very dynamic. She's very enthusiastic. And I know she's going to very she's going to relate to your concerns, and I think it's going to be great. And here on the Oregon Voters Digest, we're going to make sure that um, uh, we help her, uh, i.e., get that enthusiasm out there because uh, we, we're in some critical times right now, especially in the area of education, jobs, crime, the like in Oregon. Okay, so uh, join with the, join me with uh, with me if you will. Welcome her on board. Suzanne, thanks. Nice seeing you. Oh, thank you, Bruce. This is going to be terrific. Oh, this is going to be fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, good. And okay. that's one, one of our people that she's going to be basically responsible to. I just happen to have him on today. <laughs> that's <laughs> it's right. Jeff Reynolds, who happens to be, you've seen him, you've seen Jeff on the show. He's kind of like a fixture, and he will be a fixture <laughs> on the show for that matter. Yep. And Jeff is, he's, he's the chair of Multnomah County. And there's, there are a number of uh, chairs around the state. We're going to get mm -hmm. Suzanne to kind of talk a little bit about that around the state of Oregon. But uh, we, I think this is going to be great. Uh, uh, we're going to have them to communicate and articulate. As you know, we've been we've had a very uh, let's see a very very exciting, if you will, election process and the whole nine yard, whatever. But we're going to focus on Oregon because that's really where we are, and and, and, I, and that's why I, I appreciate the fact that that uh, Suzanne's going to be doing this job and uh, and Jeff for that matter. And that's why I'm going to be very much involved in the in the process aspect of it because it's very, it's very very important that. Uh, we as Oregonians are right now are more interested in the issues, mm -hmm. and as opposed to the to the uh, i.e. the respective parties for that matter. And so well, we respect the parties for that matter, but the fact that <laughs> we're interested in the bottom, we're the bottom line, right, Jeff? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. With that, what we're going to do? We're going to give you Suzanne the opportunity first to kind of give you a little, give us a little background okay. of who Suzanne is. I know you. But let, the, let, let my viewing right. audience know who you right. are. Right. Okay. Well, Bruce, as you said, I have been involved in the political goings-on in the state for about 30 years. Wow. And it started, uh, actually, when uh, my husband and my three children okay. were um, matriculated from a little tiny private school in Tigard into the okay. public school system. Okay. And so, you know, I became interested in what they were being taught. Mm -hmm. And there were some oh, things. Before that, you from Oregon? Oh, yeah, give, actually, give not originally more. from okay, Oregon. I was okay. born in Seattle. But you want to go way back? Well, I want to go back. I want, we want to know who you Let's are. Let's see, I sucked my thumb as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. Going way back. Yes, right. born yeah. in Seattle. Okay. And, uh, and then when I was in hi uh, high school age, we moved to Bainbridge Island. My okay. dad wanted to get out of the city. Okay. And so did, you know, ferry back and forth into Seattle. I attended University of Idaho for about a year and a half. And then I transferred to the University of Washington. Mm -hmm. And I have a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Washington. What degree? What degree? Well, the degree is in textiles, clothing, and art. Oh, cool. And so, okay. yeah, so I'm a fashion designer. I noticed. Yeah, I'm a fashion designer. I was I uh, worked uh, actually as a fashion coordinator, and I also worked in merchandising for some uh, uh, companies that uh, manufacture clothing. Okay. Uh, in the early years, before kids, and when my husband and I, uh, after we had our first child, uh, mm -hmm. Scott, he was born in the San Francisco area. I was the fashion coordinator for iMagnon in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. 
Lots of fun. Love that. Uh, then we moved to New York City and I worked uh, as a fashion coordinator for Saks Fifth Avenue. A fashion coordinator is the fashion show producer. Okay, okay. And okay. so hired models and, you know, dress, you know, plan, fun, plan the whole fashion yeah. show. Yeah, it was, okay. so it was fashion show production, basically. But uh, marketing, mm -hmm. ultimately that is marketing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when, uh, just before we left New York City, uh, Saks asked me to just sit down for an, you know, a whole day, eight hours, just just write out my ideas for marketing uh, for for the store. So that was, you know, that was a huge uh, wow. compliment to me. I was too young and too foolish. To, I didn't even keep a copy of it. But mm -hmm. um, you know, so then we moved back to the Northwest. Okay. And uh, Jack had been in the hotel business. He worked for the Plaza Hotel in New York City. Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, that's a 24-7 job. Yeah. I mean, it's really rough. Mm -hmm. That is hard work. Yeah. Anybody who's in, in that business, you know, my hat's off to them because it, it's hard business. Mm -hmm. uh, hours are long. Mm -hmm. And so we came back to the Northwest and uh, finally ended up in the Portland area. I decided, uh, my husband Jack decided to go into uh, commercial real estate. Okay. Uh, straight commission sales, so we are very familiar with you know having to manage your money and, and really live um, to the level of your lowest paycheck, mm -hmm. which is you know commission yeah. paycheck. So uh, then we finally you know ended up settling actually in Tigard mm -hmm. in the Portland area, and uh, by that time our second child had come along, and then we had a third. So we have two boys and a girl; they're all grown now. Okay, okay. And we have six grandchildren. And I think there's going to be a few, a couple more coming okay. along too. Okay. So okay. we're okay. extremely blessed. All of our kids live in Oregon. Mm -hmm. Live, in fact, they live um, in the Tigard area. Mm -hmm. And um, that's one reason why I have a high level of interest mm -hmm. in what's going on in our state relating to jobs, the okay. economy. I mean, yeah. everything. You know, government. Even though sometimes we think that we're not, we don't want to be political. We are. Mm -hmm because we're Americans mm -hmm. and we have an influence on public policy and on our government mm -hmm. and so by default we're political so what, what spurred you to get involved in, in, in well, it was, the it, well it was you know it was this issue of course I've always voted yeah, and yeah, I had met yeah. Ronald Reagan uh, prior to his <coughs> running for office my father put on uh, economic, economic conferences in mm -hmm. Honolulu mm -hmm. and uh, on uh, the big island, island of Hawaii mm -hmm. there were inter, you know national conferences mm -hmm. people came from all over the country and the very first one uh, we featured Ronald Reagan he was at that time um, had just stepped down for the governorship in, um, I believe, in California. It was mm -hmm. 1978. Mm -hmm. And so Jack, my husband, and I picked he and Nancy up at the airport in a limo. Well, that was, that was our That was our job. Yes, it was lots of fun. We really had no idea, you know, who this man was going to be. Mm -hmm. My dad had mentioned, well, you know, he's probably going to be president. And, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, right. Well, <laughs> you know. I mean, you, know, you have to remember, you know, we'd had just had two kids. In fact, I think our our youngest son was maybe four months at the time. Mm. So my head was in other yeah, places, mm -hmm. and I can Trying so to totally, yeah, absolutely, I relate to these, you know, young families that um, I've run for office a couple times, and you knock on the door and ask them, well, you know, you know, what's your biggest issue, and all, you know, really, what's the biggest issue, you know, I mean, doing the laundry this week, or yeah, 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 or yeah. you know, shopping, and making sure that my dollar stretches far enough to yeah. the end of the month. Right. That's what their issues right. really are. Right. That's really life mm -hmm. but um, yeah so that was my first introduction and of course I always voted and I was not very happy voting in Oregon it seemed like the people that I voted for and, and oftentimes the initiatives and the issues that I voted against or for didn't go my way and it was that was frustrating mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay, so yeah. now you now now you you the chair now you chair. Well, the, now I'm the chair, and the chair. and and I think I was elected um, for a number of reasons. Not only my mm -hmm. long-term involvement. I have run for office twice. I ran for the House of Representatives in 2004. Okay, in, the, in the tight and, area. Yes, and it was a very close race, Bruce. I uh, just you know lost by you know less than 800 votes, and that mm -hmm. was really frustrating to me. I learned a lot about myself. <laughs> I am very competitive, <laughs> and I didn't, you know, I, I, of course I'm not bitter that I lost. Uh, no, no, <laughs> oh, no, 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 <laughs> no. Um, but, but you, you know, got out there, though. 
Oh yes, absolutely, and, and it, yes. that was a, it was the most highly contested race yeah. in the state, actually, and and I came the closest to winning of, of all of our uh, the Republican losses during that cycle, which I I really wasn't paying that much attention to that aspect of it, but in going door to door, you know, you meet a lot of people, and I talk to many people on both sides of the fence, and it really does come down to the issues. So having done that, you know, I went back into uh, private sector. I had started a business by then. Our kids were nearly grown and moved out. And uh, I own an interior design business and mm -hmm. specialize in art, custom framing design mm -hmm. placement. I published a 200-page book, so done a lot of things on my own. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a real go-getter and a you know, uh, self-starter. And uh, very knowledgeable, again, about the marketing promotion side mm -hmm. of, of um, really uh, introducing your business or yourself mm -hmm. to the marketplace, which is what we need to do as Republicans. You, we need to market ourselves. When you ran the first time around, the first time around, if you will, what were some of the issues uh, of your platform during that particular oh, time? Pretty, knocking on the door. Yeah, that's really interesting you're area. asking that question because I haven't thought about that specifically, yeah. but <laughs> I believe that, they're, that yeah. they are the same issues that we have now. Okay. It, seriously, it is always about, you know, um, providing uh, the proper funding for the schools in okay. the state. Education that's, I mean, that's a, education yeah. is, an and is top and key. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at that time, and even this last time I ran, because I ran for the Senate in 2012, mm -hmm. uh, so that was two House districts that make up the uh, Senate district, uh, still a problem in Oregon. And we have to... Uh, how do we fix education? How do we Oregon? fix it? Yeah, when you were going through and actually representing this education, the issue of education, one, what was the problem? And then I'm sure you talked about fixing it. That was basically the platform, right, in terms of why you ran. Exactly. Right? Well, during the 04 election, uh, the PERS, um, oh, public yeah, employees, oh, yeah. um, you yes. know, retirement system, exactly. that was not as much of an issue. I just, I believe that the, that the Republicans really hadn't made that um, committed, been. convicted uh, decision mm -hmm. to, you know, to go after that because it is a, because it's a union issue, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but there still was a lot of concern about funding for education. The economy is a lot different then. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. This time in 2012, the economy mm -hmm. is suffering mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we, we have problems and, and issues regarding the funding. What is it, 17 billion, 18 billion dollar unfunded liability? It's probably more than that now than even a couple of months ago. But uh, we need to be aggressive when it comes to addressing PERS because mm -hmm. PERS will, will bankrupt the state of Oregon. Now, when we talk about fairness, that's really not right. And I will tell you, in knocking on door doors during this cycle, many people at the door would say to me, before I hardly got a word out of my mouth, mm -hmm. what are you going to do about PERS? Yeah, right. Now these were <laughs> Democrats, Independents, and Republicans. Yeah. This to me is a bipartisan issue. Uh, it's about money. You know, we all, we all need money mm -hmm. to, to survive. We need money to have choices. You know, not everybody is going to be rich, but we want to be secure and we want to have financial independence. Every single citizen in this country should ha should be able to um, survive. Is there a solution and, that it, you would suggest maybe to the viewers? Well, the PERS, well I, I would just encourage you, you to take a look at the different uh, PERS pr okay. proposals, okay. Uh, not to go into the details right, of them, right. but the uh, the Republicans in the House have suggested, in fact, uh, this actually came out of the School Boards Association. Mm -hmm. The uh, Oregon wow. State School Board Association uh, is backing this proposal and it would, uh, bottom line, what it would do is that pour mo put more money into the schools, it would take the pressure off all all of local jurisdictions, which would include the counties, the cities, everybody with a public employee is paying about a third of their retirement in those in those different um, jurisdictions, mm -hmm. including, of course, schools. And we need to take the pressure off of all of those government agencies, not just you know the bureaucracy that we call the, the public schools. Mm -hmm. This plan would extend the school days by 27, the school year by 27 yeah. days, that's okay. almost a month, it would put 3,000 more teachers to work. Mm. 
This is a Republican plan. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is not the PERS light that has been recommended by uh, the Democrat leadership in, uh, in Salem. We're when we talk about Democrats, we want to talk about our legislators, mm -hmm. the Democrat legislators, because not all Democrats are responsible for these decisions that are being made in Salem. Mm -hmm. It's important for us as Republicans and, and just citizens to, you know, to focus on these legislators and the decisions that they're making. Um, something else that it would do is it would put more money, just more money back back into the school system. So that's, you know, it's important. Again, we, we don't want to hurt our teachers. We don't want them to be uh, to be suffering, you know, in their retirement, certainly. But we need we need to ask for fairness. Well, you yeah. make a good point. In fact, Jeff, Jeff, I'm sure Jeff has spent quite a bit of time here in Multnomah County understanding the fact that we got, we got the largest district in the state of Oregon. Several and, uh, of them. Yeah, and the highest <laughs> yes. failure rate I know that. in the education system yes. sitting yeah. right here in his district. Right. right, and guess what? I don't know if, I'm sure you saw this, Jeff. There mm -hmm. was a, uh, a poll done, uh, and it was featured in the Portland Monthly Magazine in the fall. Mm -hmm. And uh, I featured that when I was running for office because I thought it was such a telling poll. This poll actually showed that 70% of families, parents and families, mm -hmm. Uh, would prefer to put their child in any school <laughs> except the public school. You know, that's gigantic. Seven zero, seventy percent. And and you know, Doonesbury cartoon used mm -hmm. to make fun of Portland public yeah. schools in mm -hmm. the '90s, and it hasn't stopped. We we've had this problem perennially exactly. for twenty years, and it's and look who's been in charge for twenty years. It's the exactly. Democratic Party, mm -hmm. and uh, their legislators. And and the the problem is that they're they're so. Uh, the, to me, the biggest issue they have is is they're so dedicated to these pet projects mm -hmm. and these these slush funds and these these uh, silly little projects that they mm -hmm. want to uh, fund ahead of the schools when in fact the Oregon Constitution the only thing mm -hmm. you're you're required to fund under the state budget is public schools so uh, the fact that uh, the public schools always end up getting uh, funded last mm -hmm. in the legislature mm -hmm. and then they go crying for more tax right. increases I, that's exactly. that's unconscionable mm -hmm. to me well, they hold our children hostage mm -hmm. that is a strategy yes it is and, and it, it is to keep uh, to keep the to use the schools and and keep the legislators hostage. That's right, and we know that. And and it's and, and, and they're spending. Time. How much are they spending in Portland public schools? It's it's over fourteen thousand dollars a kid, mm -hmm. uh, at least according to Lars Larson and the the full figures of. When everything you look at the all funds yes, budget, right. it is fourteen thousand per child, and that includes the uh, education service districts yes. as well. Right, and and we have a uh, in many of our high schools, our our uh, graduation rate is a third. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's how Major how can you fee. justify that mm -hmm. kind of public expenditure with no accountability? Mm -hmm. That's that's exactly. unconscionable. That's you know uh, uh, my kids are in a charter school uh, because. Uh, oh, I'm so glad to know that. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's great. you know, and, and be, uh, charter schools are on the rise, and and yes. the Republican Party does support uh, choice yes. in education. We 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 feel I mean, we are the party of choice in in many arenas, and in particular in education. And the reason that we are in in education is because. Parents can't wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, had this discussion many times with voters at the door. You know, they're 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 just like you, Jeff. They've got mm -hmm. young children, and they look at well. Let's see, how long will it take us to? To get the schools back up to to where we need them to be, ten years. Right. Because this is this is the way bureaucrats That's my kids plan. lost childhood. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Your child. How, well, your daughter's what, eight. Uh, 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 no, my son is seven. Oh, son my daughter is, is two and a half. Okay, so yeah. you have a seven-year-old. Okay, so he'll be seventeen. He'll yeah. be ready to graduate in ten years. We don't have time. Right. Mm. That's so exactly this right. is why you and other parents, you know, they're 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 so panicking. There's a, so there's yes. a passion there. And and I'll Absolutely. tell you what, uh, the Republicans are responsible for many of the school choice bills that we passed two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Julie Parrish in particular was That's one of right. uh, uh, the champions. And, yes. uh, we, we had a whole package of school choice bills expanding charter schools, expanding mm -hmm. the ability for parents to choose which school and create market competition. That's what mm -hmm. that, exactly. that's what drives innovation. And, and so uh, all of that stuff mm -hmm. improved uh, the, the charter school right. system. And the charter, yes, and, and the virtual charter school, this is something that, that I found very um, interesting in Tigard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They now have 
opened in the Tiger Public Schools are mimicking what is going on <laughs> with the virtual school because they have now a small. What's the virtual school? Uh, from, from there, from the minute, that, I'm sorry, the virtual school either. is online. It's an online academy. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, boy, it's really, really, it works. really nifty. Oh yes, yeah, so I know I, many I, people who I have, have their children. I have a couple of in friends in the Republican Party mm -hmm. who have, whose children go to this uh, virtual public school, and they've they were failing. The kids were failing in the public schools and have skyrocketed. They, right. They've uh, completely uh, flourished. So. Now, is that well, endorsed, if you will, by our education system, or is it just something it, that one just... It is, a charter school is paid for charter, with, with public, public with dollars, money, right? yes, it, it, to about half. Yeah, the child now, I, here's, the, here's the thing. We don't want to pit one style of education against another. The point here is right. that every student is unique mm -hmm. and every student is different. And I love the fact that what you pointed out, Jeff, that that you know these kids weren't doing well in in right. in the you know in the the classroom uh, typical classroom that you find in a public school. Mm -hmm. So parents took them out. Um, put them in Connections Academy, which is the name of this right. this school, and they are doing very well. So yes. every child is different, and and this this is recognition of that. Again, we need choice, that's choice right. for parents and choice for kids. And and that's sort of the big big ten yeah, philosophy of the team, GOP, yeah. right? Absolutely. And you know, and, and the, the, we had one point in time there was another adage at one point in time said no child should be left behind. I think that was former President Bush, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And but the bottom line is that during those formative years i.e. maybe the mm -hmm. Constitution makes it the point that during those formative years, every child should be educated, should be sure. given the chance. Because yes. if you're not educated, if you don't have that piece of paper, you cannot survive in this and, country. And our economy suffers right. and our society exactly. suffers. Exactly. exactly. So very, very important. Now, in, in, Northern in, County being the in, largest, if you will, exactly. is and, huge. So thank you for um, Yes, and you know, up until recently, mm -hmm. who suffered the most when, when they were in a school area? A school district segment of the public schools that wasn't doing as well as maybe in oh, another no, area. Big time. And absolutely, African because American, big time. so um, those people are being denied often mm -hmm. options. Mm -hmm. You know, when we're fighting for choice in education, it is those who is those people who do not have the means to send their yeah. children to a private mm -hmm. school. And I've heard this argument so many times, Bruce. Oh well, you know, you can send your child to a private school if you want. No, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Not everyone has that choice right, 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 because, right. because because of, of because of conditions. economic yeah. conditions, yeah. and so I want to make it really clear: it is the Republican Party that is promoting yeah. choice, true choice. When I say true choice, I mean for everyone, regardless of their economic situation. So you know, the money should follow the child, and it, it, what that does is so cool. Mm -hmm. It puts parents back mm -hmm. in the driver's seat if they don't like the curriculum that is being taught in the public schools and and, and that was my issue way back when our kids were young it's like you know what I'm not that much in favor of what you're teaching our child and I got about 150 friends of mine to go to a school board meeting and talk about that mm -hmm. but nothing happened <laughs> nothing changed why because because we have uh, edicts that come down from you know the federal level and the state level to our local schools right now we don't have local control when it comes to curriculum mm -hmm. at all mm -hmm. so you know parents opting out your child out of a class that's first of all it's really hard to monitor all that mm -hmm. from most parents are working you know they aren't paying attention they don't have the opportunity to to go to the school and read through all the textbooks if they choose to send their child to another school that's not a charter school um, well, they they have to pay for it themselves, and well, they don't, so they don't you, have that choice, and they're really so they're stuck, you right. know. In well, this I will say this, situation. and I'm sure that Multnomah people here in Multnomah County, especially the Portland Public School mm -hmm. District aspect of it, can really appreciate the fact that you are going to be focusing in some of those areas. Uh, I can pretty well mm -hmm. tell you, in the in the Portland Public School area, they've taken Voc Ed out of the out of the school district. Vocational That's education, right. Voc Ed, which Jetson is, is the so only one at critical. This point in time, they're about ready to right. close that piece. Too. Right, right. And, are uh, they? Oh yeah, big I time. Mean, you know. I mean, I this is you know these are life skills, Bruce. Oftentimes yes. you don't follow that as a career, yeah. but you know shop classes. You know, I mean now, I mean now we have chefs. You know, so why shouldn't we be te teaching culinary yeah. arts? Well, they were doing it at one point in time. They took it out of school. I and know. And then yeah. maybe every every child should go to college. Well, you know, there's a blue collar side too in this whole piece. The majority yeah. of of our, mm -hmm. our, our quote Americans are not just college students. If mm -hmm. you will, I, I, I don't worry. I'm Education with is fine, you. But some people I'm need that 
actually exactly. hands on, hands on kind yeah, of not, exactly. to learn. And, and not every kid is is destined to go to college exactly. and get a degree. Exactly. And, no. and if exactly. we leave them behind exactly. and don't allow them the options exactly. of, of exactly. finding a different career, exactly. then then that we're not serving them. Well, this is going to this is well, going to be real good because, in all due respect, here we got someone from uh, e. Multnomah County. Uh, he, right. he has to be the chair, and you have to be the chair at the state level. We're going to get something done here in the moment. Well, I right. think we are. We Especially in Portland Public Schools. If you yeah, could that piece, that would be fantastic. Absolutely. I'm serious, because parents all across the board, you know, you got, you, for instance, you've got the Intel that's been building this, this uh, i.e., this addition, if you will, mm -hmm. million dollars, mm -hmm. made, a, made a deal with the state, if you will. So did Nike. Remember, right, Nike right, did right. the same yeah. thing, but mm -hmm. no one talked about how many jobs are going to be dedicated, if you will, say in Multnomah County, mm -hmm. or how, what voc ed are they going to be putting into the schools? Right, right. They're not talking about well, that. Well, and, and so are they going to be that. using local contractors? Exactly. Can, do they have a pool it, of workers exactly, to draw from exactly, for those local exactly. contractors? Exactly. And what I'm hearing, exactly. Suzanne, you're going to be right on top of that one. Well, you, and Jeff. you know, the, it, it's, 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 we, need, right? we need education. Yes. And we need to we have need the economy. Yes. We need to we need to jumpstart our economy. Yes. And so there, are, uh, you know, all, a lot of uh, economic issues are pertain to right. public policy. Right. Right. And when public policy uh, um, challenges people who want to go into business or people right. who want to hire, when they are uh, putting restrictions, regulations mm -hmm. on uh, development. We have, you know, very restrictive land use uh, policies mm -hmm. in our state, and this is statewide. Because mm -hmm. I look, I, I was over in Eastern Oregon last weekend, mm -hmm. and uh, they are really hurting. In some of those counties, Bruce, they cannot, the, the people cannot even afford to keep their their um, state, their county uh, organiz, their county, what is it? County commission. county commission, their, you know, their elections mm -hmm. division, you know, all of the things that the county supports. Yeah, they need, yeah. The yeah, county yeah. seats, wow. they cannot, uh, some counties, I, when we went south down to Medford mm -hmm. and um, that area, uh, a little bit north of Medford, uh, they, have, they, they can't afford to pay a sheriff. Mm. Okay, a lot of this pertains to this PERS issue because mm -hmm. before, remember I mentioned that they have to, you know, they have to pick up the tab. Uh, for this promise that was made many well, you know, years ago. I, I like the idea that you are going to also focus on the Holy Spirit purge, but because it is a mess. The bottom line, mm -hmm. the bottom line is that it's all about the, the money. The, the decision makers on purge right now uh, are all on it. You know, <laughs> there's no yeah. conflict of interest <laughs> there, is there? Right. So, so, so <laughs> I don't understand what, what's the big deal here. The bottom line is that yeah. the well, decision makers yes. are already on it. They're yeah. not going to quote. Uh, Okay. Shorten their lifestyle. And no. now you're no. taking Anybody us down else, that you know, path. Yeah. That's a, that's a lot a of the heavy... people voting on it, you're right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they, but they not have... only that, we so, are elected. So what do we do? <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah. Do, we, do we bring it back to the voters? Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> You you know, know, back to, to the voters right? yeah. and just say everybody should take a cut. You know, we we went through secret restoration. Maybe we can do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it could come to I, that. Just I don't a know. Just a thought. Yeah. My point is that yeah. we, we, we're throwing all this stuff about purrs, but realistically, you can't do anything about it because the decision makers are all in a position well, to we make did. decision. Our, our uh, Senate and House Republicans sure. are fighting for they reform. Really? There are some, mm -hmm. uh, like Dennis Richardson, for instance, down in, um, mm -hmm. uh, not Medford, where is he from? Uh, um, anyway, down Southern Oregon. Yeah. Uh, he's taking a real lead on this because he mm -hmm. sees, you know, it's, it's it's going to, it, it's just this giant blob that's taking yeah, up more and more of our budget. You're talking about, yeah. Maybe talking about, maybe take a little piece off of, was it up and living and something, was it that, that component you get a increase in your salary? Oh, the COLA, the cost of living the cost increase. cost of living yeah. increase. Hey, that's not the B. That's guaranteed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is this big chunk you talked about. Well, that's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Well, the COLA is 6% increase every year guaranteed. Yeah. yeah. On the on retirement now, you and I probably. I mean, we we yeah, I mean, we've they, been investing. I, I don't get that kind of no, stuff we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. No, we don't have any guarantee. Now we've invested money in, um, you know, in um, retirement investments, mm -hmm. but there is no guarantee on our investment. In fact, no one who is in the financial industry would ever tell you, hey, Jeff, you know, let me invest your money for you and I'll guarantee a 6% return. In, in fact, it's yeah. illegal. In fact, yeah. it's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So here the state has done that. Mm -hmm. And those people who made those promises years ago are long gone. In fact, yeah. I think some of them moved to Australia. Yeah. So, 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 this is, so, so this is, so this, you know, yes, ideas, right. yes, yeah. still getting paid. These ideas, <laughs> yes. <laughs> ideas have consequences yeah. long term. Yeah. And 
and yeah. so you know there are a number of other issues related to voting and you know other things that have come up just in this yeah. session last minute that are very interesting they're talking about having 16 year olds vote you know and you think to yourself okay have you really investigated what this could mean mm -hmm. long term mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are lots of ramifications of every single public policy piece. Well, that, well, that we're we all need. people are all struggling across the board. Yes, and it, again, it's not just a party; it's a people problem. Right. You know, we're having mm -hmm. some tough times right now, we're, raising well, a family. You know, especially trying, in the state of Oregon, well, we do. We are. Uh, we're gonna yeah. do something about it. So yeah, we're we're pretty far down. I think we're like thirty-seven. And we want to thank you. We want to thank you for your enthusiasm. I like it. I mean, I'm sure the, the, the viewing audience can see that between the two of you well, right now, the largest county and the chair of the Republican. Party. Party. And basically, you're talking about Oregon and talking about the issues of Oregon. You're going to put them on the table. You're going to come here to the Oregon Voters Digest, and we're going to talk about them, and we're going to get Thank people you. involved, right? Right, that's you, right. You don't have any problem having the, the this chair of the Democratic Party across here asking him to solution. Oh, I don't know. You don't have fact, any problem I, with that? I, w I saw him yesterday. You know Frank? Well, two days ago, Frank. Yeah, Frank's yes. locally. You yes, know he Frank is. Locally. Absolutely. So we'll, we'll do that, right? <coughs> We'll do that. We'll get that done. Absolutely. <laughs> now, what we'd like to do, especially, I want to make sure that Talk I don't miss this opportunity, is that, that is to invite. It's on the yeah. D side, and yeah. Jeff does the R side. And Jeff Mapes? Jeff Mapes. Kind of like on a. Uh, I, I'm kind oh, of, no. well, <laughs> okay. No, I'm, well, I'm just, I'm just saying, uh, and I just happened to. That's, have, that's their assignment, yeah, perhaps. Right, right, right. I, I just happened to have had a. I got to be upfront with you, but I had a little encounter with Jeff uh, not oh, too long ago. Okay. I, I called him up and asked him about um, uh, some things that might have happened at the uh, at, at a Republican convention. You know, mm -hmm, where, mm -hmm. where somebody was for, for whatever reason, that somebody has been throwing some peanuts or something, some uh, whatever. Oh yes, remember yes, that, I remember that, that situation. And yeah, I was yeah. calling him. He was there. Yeah, yeah. And, no, I I saw him. He and, and, he and his, David were both there, actually. Yeah, yeah. But his position was, you know, I don't deal with that. Uh, I don't deal with these, Bruce. You, 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 you deal, <laughs> talk you deal to David. You talk to David. <laughs> and I, I felt insulted, so to speak, yeah. at my point, because I figured I'm sort of a media geek myself to a certain degree. Yeah, you've got. And I've invited it. both of them to come on the show. Sure. But they're saying no, naturally. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Course, you yeah. got my point? Yeah. Yeah. But I, again, I, I'm inviting them again today. Absolutely. You know, yeah. saying, hey, look here, because uh, I'm not being paid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is all voluntary here. You got me? But right, you're, right. we're speaking to the, the true people. But I mean, you've got you've got yourself quite an audience you've sure. built up sure. over a couple sure. of decades, sure. and, and sure. you're a well respected member of the community. So I, th that's that's a that's legit. I mean, that's not something you just blow off. But they're representing folks. And yeah. Right, it's very important that they understand the facts. Right. And the sensitivity of these issues. Just like you want well, to talk about. And, and and we on the right often complain about a lack of journalistic integrity and a lack right. of uh, right. and and a strong leftist right. bias in right. in the mainstream media. And this this was a classic example of that mm -hmm. because instead of reporting my side of the story right. accurately mm -hmm. and a couple of people did by the way I'll, I'll say this Yu Sheng Zheng who was the uh, Oregonian reporter mm -hmm. that called me originally mm -hmm. uh, quoted me accurately mm -hmm. in her article in her original article Ken Body of Coin6 News uh, came, came and interviewed me and, and he, he gave good. my side of the story that's so, good. so that, those, that's what we should do that's exactly what we that's should what do we instead should do. of getting all up in arms about exactly. you know somebody else and, and really what it is it's you know we're, we're challenging their turf mm -hmm. uh, and and as citizen journalists, we're delegitimizing their exactly. position, exactly. and that's that's exactly. a problem for them. Exactly. Instead of reporting on on all the facts, you know, it's it's exactly. turf protection. Exactly. You know, I, I, another interesting I'll throw it on the table since we're talking about the Oregonian aspect of it. I've called uh, Cardwell when he was there at one point in time. Oh yeah, he's not with us anymore, but. Uh, we talked about this issue. We had sort of a we had a cup of coffee and we talked about it. It was a little heated, if you will, to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I objected, if you will, to the uh, the editorialization, the page aspect of it. Yes. With, with no name on it. Right. No right. name and no photo. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No name and no photo. I would like to see who my accuser is. Right. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Anybody, yeah. it, it, anytime they editorialize something. Who's written the article? And if, if you're writing an editorial, are you going to uh, exactly. pu automatically publish my rebuttal? I, exactly. Uh, and exactly. we'll see. Exactly. You know? So who are the listed yeah. folks? I mean, sometimes, at one point in time, they were listing the folks who were on the editorial board. Right. They don't do that anymore. That's right. You notice that? Yep. yep. No, that's <laughs> true. But yeah. here we are. Yes. Here you are, right here. It's, it's, yeah, talking about I, I will have a conversation you with know, anybody if I and, have the and time. In fact, uh, I would even open it up if we had a moment or two to open up the line. If, if, if we can do that fast enough, I don't know whether or not we can. We got about ten more minutes. If I'm any, happy to. Anybody yeah. want to call and sure. and and maybe talk about this little incident that you have and mm -hmm. how, did, how did they feel? You know, how did they feel about it, if you will? I'm happy to. Because I saw it, and I didn't feel good about it and comfortable about it, the way it was being handled. Yeah. But the yeah. fact of the matter is, we're talking about this whole issue of assault weapons and this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. and, and
and she has been basically the point person on this whole piece. Yes. And the question was, why weren't you at the meeting? There were people there. Right. There were interest, et cetera. And then well, and, and, and so you know, the, the biggest thing for me is is whenever a public official lies, yeah. they they erode the trust exactly. in, that the public has in them. And so for her, in particular, there was uh, she, when when I was interviewed by Coin Six News, Ken Body. Right. Uh, you know, I, I explained what was done, why it was done, right. and and you know, right. I didn't shoot the video, but I wrote the article right. and. And so they went to Ginny Burdick afterwards and they said, uh, uh, did you have a scheduling conflict? And she said specifically, well, you know, we've seen these gun rights extremists disrupt other town hall meetings, and, and we were really concerned that uh, they were going to try to take over. There was even somebody ca uh, carrying a uh, concealed weapon at one of the town hall meetings. Well, okay, first off, that's legal. Mm -hmm. Secondly, um, she completely sidestepped the answer and, and admitted to fabricating the story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, no, and nobody seems to think that's a big deal. Well, in all due respect, <laughs> in all due respect, if she wants to take the lead, yeah, you know what I mean, and she's in the kitchen. The heat's going to be there. Right. She got to accept that position. That's right. If that's not, that's give your job as a give legislator. It some, give it to someone else. The yeah. fact of the matter is, you're elected by the public, and as far as I'm concerned, I want you to lead. Well, as a senator, her district is about 125,000 voters, give or take. Yeah, uh, that's that's a lot of people. That's to a represent. lot of folks who wants yeah. to know what's going on, and that's yeah. a major issue. Right, it's a national issue. It's on the table. Right, and you know, she's the Oregon representative, if you will, on that side of the fence, yes. and people want to know. That's right. And and a, a funny side note on this, by the way, is that after she canceled her town hall, yeah, um, a couple of uh, people on the right got together and said, "Well, you know, we're we're mad," and you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so they went ahead and, and scheduled a town hall of their own at the mm -hmm. same place at the same time, mm -hmm. and it featured Kevin Starrett of the Oregon Firearm Federation okay. Okay. as the speaker instead okay. to talk about the gun issues right. that were right. coming up. Right. And there were a whole bunch of people there that were concealed yeah. carrying and, and were uh, uh, fans of the Second yeah. Amendment yeah. and perfectly civil, yeah. perfectly yeah. well-behaved, and, and no disruption whatsoever. And it's not just because it was somebody that they agree with that was holding the town hall. It's because they're polite members of society and, and they, they're interested in maintaining the civil society, which is the whole point of the Second Amendment. Well, you know, I, I, when I saw that video piece, I, I, I thought about some of the comments that were being made from the standpoint that she was a little nervous and scared mm -hmm. about these extremists and this, that, and the other. But, you know, not just going around and picking up your newspaper into the yeah. garbage can or whatever. If you got a problem, you wouldn't be outside. Listen, other, well, that's exactly right. <laughs> that's exactly outside. right. Yeah. You'd be in the house. <laughs> yeah, if you were really worried shows, about your security. The that's a, shown yeah. the fact that, hey, my security, I've got yeah. someone there, blah, 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 routine. Right. That's a different ball. That's a really good point. I hadn't I thought of it from that yeah. angle. But, you know, the other thing was that the car was parked. You can tell from the video the car was legally right. parked yeah. on a public yeah. thoroughfare yeah. across the street. Yeah. There was no invasion of privacy. The, the video wasn't shot through the window. There was no, uh, you know, they didn't uh, try to break into her house or anything. Right. It was right. it was all, uh, you know, publicly shot from a public uh, uh, sidewalk. In fact, uh, we've been through this on my blog. Uh, we had somebody challenge mm -hmm. the idea that we had a video up there from a year ago during the Occupy movement of somebody getting arrested and we're like well okay so the guy pointed the camera at the at the woman who was getting arrested it was in the middle of the street at 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. during mm -hmm. a riot where mm -hmm. you know businesses are yeah. getting vandalized and all this right. stuff and she turns to the videographer sees the camera in his hand and spells out her name for him and then she comes back a year later and says I don't I want that taken down it's an invasion of my privacy are you kidding me no. really yeah. uh, come on it's, smell so, the coffee uh, they call yeah. smartphones today. You that's I mean? right. I mean, everybody's got the paper. You know that, right? That's right. I mean, that's everybody's. A fact. That's a fact, you know, man. I mean, hey. uh, Andrew Breitbart himself oh, hey. said that at, hey. at uh, CPAC a couple of years ago. Everybody is a journalist now. You have one of these, that's you're right. a journalist. That's right. You know? I mean, the whole issue in, in Los Angeles, remember the police situation with oh, 10? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Had there not been a video. Well, that's that's exactly right. Had there not right. been a video. Yes. So I'm saying? So video plays quite a bit of role, if you will. The yep. smartphone does. And it's, it's, a, it's, the, it's, the, it's the reason for the First yeah, Amendment. Exactly. It's the, it, exactly. And the Second right. Amendment, exactly. by the way. It's to exactly. fight it back against exactly. government tyranny. Exactly. So, Jenny, hey, in all due respect, uh, we, we'd like to invite you over here at the Oregon Voters Digest. And uh, would you mind, with, in fact, I'd, I'd invite you to come over here and share with the public at large about uh, the rationale for the issues, that, the rationale that you're carrying. Uh, so it might benefit, you know, and maybe I can get a gun in, you know, someone from the organization, if you will. Or, you we know, need to solve this problem. I, I don't even, I don't even want to uh, intimidate her. If she no, doesn't want to no. appear with somebody else, that's, yeah. that's fine, yeah. too. You yeah. know, I don't want to be intimidating. But no, she but, should. Yeah. She, she, she's an elected official, 
and who's going to be the spokesperson? She's That's identified right. herself as being the spokesperson for this issue. That's she right. happens to be a Democrat, but she's a she's yeah. an elected official. People want to know. Oh, okay. by the, and, and oh, by the way, she appeared on Al Sharpton to talk yeah. about this yeah. whole mm -hmm. issue after she told another uh, citizen journalist that there would be no further comment on this story to the media. Yeah. So. <laughs> so folks, yeah, yeah as together. long as, I mean, her yeah, whole her yeah, whole thing yeah, is yeah. about going to the people that are friendly to her and not facing the people that oppose well, her. She can come in Oregonian. I yes. have to hear the Oregon Voters Digest. I know Al myself, but the bottom line, he's from a national perspective. Right, right. We're in Oregon. We, you know, we are we are a sportsman state in many ways. And, uh, very much uh, you so. Know, we're, we're a hunting state in the aspect yes. of it, and uh, people people really care and, and, and feel very strong. About they, the, about they, they do. Right. You know, I mean, in, and their in, weapons. Yes, in Oregon, so. you've got you've got a strong Second Amendment. Uh, right. You've got a strong maverick sense yes, yes. In, in the state of yeah, Oregon. So. There's there's something very unique about mm -hmm. being an Oregonian, mm -hmm. and and I oh, think yeah, yeah, yeah. gun rights are much more cherished than in other states. Yeah, I think in Oregon, it's uniquely pro Second Amendment. Yeah, very much so. Well, hey, this is this has been good. It's been very informative. Uh, Jeff, look like you're on top of it. You're like you're, you're doing your job. <laughs> I'm doing Jeff. my best. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, and I, I hope to say the same thing for anyone else, for that matter. We're we're in some trying times right now. We it's are. very important that we communicate with mm -hmm. one another, and we want to use this podium to do just such that. And, and I appreciate and, and it. I will say that yeah. uh, I want to thank you because when I called up the call you up and I called up the chair of the Democratic Party, mm -hmm. and you guys came over. Yep. And we talked about the issues very soon. That was quite a while ago. Yeah, now now Casey's not the uh, chair anymore. Not, right? Yeah, yeah. we're going to find out who has to, who the other yeah, who, I, I, who's the person. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I forget the name off the top of yeah, my head. Okay. So then, we'll have Frank, to do some recent research. But, but then Frank Dixon is the, yeah, the state yeah. chair. I happen to know, know him, and yeah. I'm going to hopefully have him on, and, and he can identify his platform, his issues, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. Because at the end of the day, it's about meat and potatoes. Yep. You know, it's about jobs. It's about where am I going to be going, and what about my kids' education? What about my family? What about crime? Yep. Right? Uh, who's paying the bill? So we got a lot of work to do. We do, and and you know, we talked about a lot. Uh, you know, the, the post mortem of how the Republicans lost the election yep. in 2012, right. and right. we have to rebrand ourselves, right. and we have to make ourselves more friendly. I had an opportunity to sit down at a, a bloggers briefing at CPAC with uh, Governor Scott Walker of, okay. of uh, Wisconsin, the, the very famous Republican, fought off mm -hmm. the unions, all that stuff, the recall and everything. And his point he reiterated over and over again is that our stories that we, we have to go out and we have to talk to the voters as Republicans and tell them why our policies are relevant to them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very powerful thing that we, yes. we, we've, we haven't done a great right, job of right, doing. Right, right. You know, for all this idea of, you know, we have to rebrand ourselves, we have to change our yeah. program. We have no. to scrap the platform. No, no none of that. No. What, what we need to do is, to, yes, it, tell the, the voters one-on-one, -on -one, you as an individual, yep. how do my policies make your life better than that's Democrat right. policies? There you go. That, that, that's the bottom line. Yes. Okay. Yep. With that note, Jeff, again, thanks again for being with us, and uh, you'll, hopefully you'll be back with us again. Absolutely. I'm, I'm sure there are a number of issues on the table. You got me involved. One or two. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks. Well, thank you very much for being with us, and we really appreciate it very much. And uh, do join us uh, in the coming months because we we are going to spend quite a bit of time uh, on these issues because uh, we got to get that thing squared away, especially the leadership yep. of this country and the leadership among us yes. well, as far as Oregonians. So hopefully we can get the governor here at one, some point in time. I mean, we got to talk to the issues. What are the issues? And I'm glad Suzanne came here tonight, to this afternoon and talked with us about what, what her issues are. You can see she's a very human person. Yes, she is. Very enthusiastic, yeah, very lot family of energy, oriented, yeah. lots yeah. of energy and whatever. And those are the kinds of things and kind of folks like yourself. Yep. I mean, she's com comparable to that, mm -hmm. and uh, and she's got a lot of things going. And there were some other things she wanted to talk about, but she's going to wait again for the next time around. That's okay. right. Yeah. Jeff, thanks again for the time. Thanks appreciate for, it. Appreciate okay, it. Good enough. All right. Thank you, folks. See you next week with another good one. Have a good one. Take care.